I tend to look at many things from a Marine Corps perspective. And from that perspective, Chris stands out. He is a person of his word. He sets the example. He cares about his family, his people. He knows his job. He's a man of integrity and honor. All traits of a good leader. When you decided to present Chris with the Ray Scott Trailblazer Award, you made a great choice. Thank you. Walt is, uh, Walt and Sandy have become really dear friends of ours at Braze Island over the last several years and, and uh, an absolute giant of, of a personality and, and person. And uh, so to have him up here today was really quite a treat. And, and uh, don't you think Boomer is a great name for a general? <laughs> it was a sure bet he wasn't going to be a florist. Well, I wanted to, uh, to thank Gary, obviously, as everybody has. But, uh, it, you know, it's one thing to have an idea for something like this, the awards, the legends, Hall of Fame. But to pull it off and do it in such style and to really become a key part of the culture now in the outdoors and, and history and future together, I think it's quite an achievement, so bravo to you and your team, Gary. Um, you know, I also want to recognize my lovely bride, my very patient bride of 22 years. Amy is with us today, and uh, she is absolutely. She is a key part of our business and always has been, and, and uh, a terrific mother as well as business partner, and so really delighted you could be here, hon. I've got some friends in from Sporting Classics Magazine. Uh, Duncan Grant and Wayne Nanny are here. Melanie is here as well, Wayne's uh, wife. Uh, I am a huge fan of Sporting Classics Magazine and have been for a long time for a lot of the reasons that have been talked about in this room today. I think they just have done a masterful job at celebrating the sporting life. And I think they've, they've now become more than that. They've really become a, a token between generations because I think they they keep folks like Hemingway and Ruark and Roosevelt and Jack O'Connor alive through the written word. So, and they always do it in such a beautiful package and, and the chance to do something in television with them this year was really a treat and it's been a lot of fun. So thanks guys for being here and making it fun. Uh, to, to get a Ray Scott award, anything Ray Scott, if ever this category had a trailblazer, it was Ray Scott, an absolute giant. And uh, so it means that much more to me by virtue of the association with, with Ray, of course. Well, you can tell from the, the tape, we've done a lot of television over the years. Uh, a lot of outdoor programming, I think 56 series, something like that. A lot in the mainstream space. Dog the Bounty Hunter's new series coming to WGN American. Just for the record, I've only darted a rhino. Um, and uh, we're doing an IMAX film and a lot of television in between. But I think like everybody in this room today, my passion, my heart has always been in the outdoors. It's, it's how we relate, as, as General Boomer was saying, as a family, our best memories are in, in the outdoors, like, like most of you. And, and uh, you know, I think I was in my 20s before I realized Hoppy's number nine wasn't a cologne. But uh, fortunately, my wife put up with that. Um, so it's, it's a key reason I wanted to be here today, because I think it's time, and Pete Shepley started the conversation on this and some others. I'm seeing the fire in the belly in this room, which is fantastic. It's time we have a conversation uh, a really straight talk conversation about what we're up against as a category, as a way of life, as a culture. And because I live most of my life in mainstream media, I see it every day. I'm up against it every day. And if we are facing this sort of perfect storm now of social media, of mainstream media, of corporations, of federal bureaucracy, state governments, local governments, school systems, as Pete was talking about, that have created this perfect storm to put pressure on our category and drive down recruitment retention. And it's been very effective. I serve on the board of the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, have for about the last three years. And I can tell you the number of bills that are being introduced around the, the country and state houses is absolutely withering. And what's the effect? Well, the effect is we're down five million hunters. We're down less, we have less than half the waterfowl hunters we once had. We're down $11 billion in sales in the hunting category since 2011 alone. We're now less than 5% of the American population. In many states, we're much less than that. So what do we do about that? How do we engage in the mainstream? How do we fight this cultural war? 
It isn't just about access. Don't be confused. There is a cultural war happening to make it unpleasant, uncomfortable, uncool to be a, to be a hunter, especially. What do we do about that? Where is our Super Bowl ads? Where is our camera-ready speakers bureau to the mainstream? Where is our campaign advertising in mainstream media, nonstop, state level, federal level? You know, where, where is our celebrity campaign? Where is our social media strategy? Where is our crisis management plan? And I ask this rhetorically, where is this? Because at the end of the day, we know, we know there's going to be another cease of the line. Are we ready for it? Are we going to respond in the moment, or are we going to write magazine articles six or eight months after the fact when something blew up in 48 hours on social media? And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute. We are the people that imposed excise taxes on ourselves. D Dingle Johnson, Pittman Robertson taxes that have now raised north of $20 billion for conservation, pumped billions more into the National Wildlife Refuge System through our duck stamp sales, billions more into nonprofit conservation organizations, billions more into private lands management. We've raised game populations, in many cases, to all-time highs. So why exactly, why exactly do we have to defend that record? It's a fair question, but I'll tell you why. Last year alone, the top three animal rights anti-hunting organizations, and there are many more, raised north of $300 million. They spent less than 2% doing a thing for an animal. The rest of it they spent attacking us, and they're aided and abetted by a media that can't seem to discern bes between a, a, a hunter and a poacher, which is like saying a pharmacist is a drug dealer. Friends, this is the culture, this is the fight, this is the struggle we are in. Let's understand that. And I think the good news is I've been canvassing the industry, manufacturers, conservation organizations, um, retailers as well, and just I think there is a real sense for the first time that I've looked at this for a while in the industry that something big and bold and different must be done. We've got to respond in the mainstream. Now is the moment. If not us, who? If not now, when? And, and I think there's frustration. You're hearing frustration in some of the recipients. Leadership. We need leadership, okay? And we, we just are in a situation now where we don't have time to waste. And the question for us, and, and, you, and you think back to 1937, a quick history lesson. A bunch of people got in a room like this and they said, and this was at the, the, the end of the Dust Bowl, it was in the height of the Great Depression. They got in a room like this, maybe it wasn't floating, and they said, we have got to find a way, with no money around, to send money to Canada to save the prairie puddles, to save the duck factory. Of course, that was the genesis of Ducks Unlimited, which spawned really the, the privatization to a very significant degree of conservation in America. I think what we are facing today, friends, is exactly that big moment. Now we've got to do something big and bold, and we've got to respond, we've got to tell our story, we've got to quit being defined by everybody else and define ourselves. We're really good at telling ourselves how great we are. We're not so good at telling the mainstream. And that mainstream is having a profound impact on us. Look, at the end of the day, our culture is rich. It's a heritage worth fighting for. Defend it. Defend it in the school systems. Defend it in the state government, municipalities, the federal bureaucracies. Defend it in the churches. Somebody say amen. Because at the end of the day, we want our kids to know we stood for something. Mostly that we stood for them. And they will in turn stand for their kids. And so it is to be an American. Eternal vigilance, my friends. Eternal vigilance. God bless you. Please stay in the fight.